Hi boys and girls. Hello fourth graders. Today I'd like to talk to you about dividing and some strategies you can use to do some simple one uh, one digit divisor problems. So I'm going to show you three different tricks you can do in order to solve these problems. One way you could solve it is by doing quick pictures, but you didn't know you could use that for division. If I had the problem 54 divided by 3, the first thing I would do, step 1, I would draw 50 with my sticks and four ones. Then, once I've got this drawn out, I would make three groups because my divisor is three. I do three groups. Now I'm going to take and try to give out the 54 to these three groups. So I put one here, one ten here, one ten there. Still have 24 left over. I can't go 10, 10, 10 because I don't have three tens. I need to regroup. I regroup by splitting up the tens into ones. So now I have 24 ones. Now I give out those 24 ones one at a time to each group. I've noticed in class that some of us are trying to go one by one by one in each group and that's just not as effective. It's better if you group them together and use your base 10 system and your quick pictures in order to group them together and get rid of the bigger chunk fast and then once you're done regroup and use one by one. When I did that I found 54 divided by 3 equals 18. I counted each and made sure what's in each and I labeled it because this way I can tell if I have a remainder because sometimes we end up with a remainder or if we did our math wrong we should double check let's make sure 8 plus 8 plus 8 that does 8 times 3 that's 24 that's what I have right here we need to double check our math the whole steps of the way every step we need to double check what we're doing just to be sure that we're not making some silly mistake so be sure that you try and use this way that way doesn't work for you. Another way to stay organized is to use arrays. Some of us have tried using this already. Arrays are another way to stay organized and to clearly see without having the whole circles and the little dots. Instead, you use X's, or if you are using a fine enough pen, you could even do numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, go to a new line, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, go to a new line. I used X's here and I kept track of how many were on each line. The first thing I did was go 5 X's because my divisor is 5. I made rows of 5. When I got to the end, I went to another. Now I have 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 36, 37, 38. Once I'd made all my X's and I got into my dividend, 38, then I counted up my rows that were complete. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven complete rows. So now I know my quotient is seven, and then one, two, three, my remainder is three. So that's another way you can solve it. Um, it's a little, it can be, uh, for some of us, it might be simpler than doing a quick picture and having to do all the regrouping. Another way we can solve is also by using the algorithm. We could even use this combined with quick picks or arrays in order to make sure that we're getting the steps right along the way, especially because quick pictures will show you when you're regrouping. It'll help you through the steps. The basic steps of the algorithm are to divide, into the first digit, multiply, subtract, bring down, repeat. So divide 3 into 7, we get 2, 3 times 2 is 6, 7 minus 6 is 1, bring down the 6. Now 3 goes into 16, we're going into this bottom number, not into the 6 here, we go into the 16, the number that we've just created by subtraction. So 3 goes into 16, mm, 5 times, 3 times 5, 15, 16 take away 15 is 1, 3 can't go into 1, that's my remainder. So I get to 25, remainder 1. Be sure to rewatch, rewind, take notes, and pay careful attention and pause as needed so that you too can understand the three different ways you can solve division problems. Make sure that you're prepared because you have a quiz on division tomorrow.